Hi, I'm going to use Newton's laws to calculate the forces on the block in this hypothetical situation. So the block is attached by two ropes which are attached to the ceiling and uh, we know that the mass of the block is 60 kilograms and from that information alone we should be able to calculate all of the forces on this block. So I would start with the free body diagram as usual with any Newton's laws uh, situations. We have a weight force due to the earth on the block. We have a uh, tension force, uh, T2, up to the right. And then we have a second tension force up to the left, uh, T1, on the block. Now you might have a little bit better intuition about how long these arrows should be drawn, but since we don't have the data, uh, we don't have a, uh, we just or have to, the sketch might not be exactly accurate in terms of the uh, magnitudes of these vectors. But let's just blaze ahead. Um, so one thing that I don't like about these angles is that they're measured with respect to the vertical axis. So I prefer my angles to be measured counterclockwise with respect to positive x. So for example, for T2, I would assert that uh, it's 50 degrees counterclockwise from positive x as opposed to 40 degrees clockwise from the y-axis. And likewise, uh, theta 1, the angle for this vector is 110 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Okay, so there's my uh, free body diagram and then um, a little bit of uh, tidying up in terms of the directions. Uh, one, uh, one thing we can do right away is actually calculate the weight force. We'll be a third of the way there just using W equals mg. Okay, 60 times 9.8 and I get an answer of weight force of 588 newtons. Okay, we're a third of the way there. All right, so the tension uh, forces are actually be a little bit tricky. Um, so one thing that I asserted at the beginning was that this uh, block was held in place, and this block, uh, if it's to be held in place, has to have a net force of zero on it, okay? Newton said so, okay? So uh, that's a, in a uh, two-dimensional situation. What you'll typically do is break this up into X and Y components. So I will assert that because there's no uh, net force at all, that the X components have to add up to zero. And likewise, we can assert that the Y components have to add up to zero. Okay, and so probably the hardest part of Newton's laws problems is figuring out what goes on the left-hand side of these equations. Maybe it'll say MA on the right. Uh, in this case, it just says zero because it's at rest. Um, but taking this free body diagram and putting it uh, into action here is, is really uh, what the important skill you need to have is. So um, you just take all the forces and use a little bit of trig to throw them in for, uh, into both the X and Y components. And so I have a tension force, uh, and I, I'm going to use cosine. Okay, so remember that uh, cosine is associated with the x direction, and then t2, cosine theta 2. And then we could, uh, if we wanted, have the x component of the weight, but that's sort of silly because uh, there is no x component to the weight. So we could write plus 0 if we wanted, but I'm going to keep this from getting too out of hand by... Uh, just asserting that that has to add up to zero. Okay, so that's the x direction, three vectors, two of which have uh, x components. We do the same thing, or similar thing, in the y direction. So I do t1 sine theta, that's the trig function associated with the y direction, and then t2 sine theta 2, and then the weight force is down in the negative direction, so I'm going to manually put in a minus sign there. Okay, so that's a, a bit of a mess of equations, but um, it, so at this point we're going to just be doing math, and so in order to do that we need to make sure that we have equal numbers of equations and unknowns. That gives us a good chance of being able to solve this. So I have theta 1 and theta 2 are known, okay, weight is known, I just calculated that. So it's T1 and T2, which appear twice 
in each of the, uh, uh, we're twice in these equations, so it's a little bit tedious. I'm going to skip over some of the algebra, and but basically what I, what I do here is I'm going to solve for T1 in this equation, and then substitute into this equation here, solve for, uh, solve for T2. Uh, you certainly would be welcome to do uh, your algebra in a, diff in a different way. But here's my symbolic solution for T2. You can check that yourself. Okay, i got to check my notes here. Uh, is W over the uh, minus cosine theta 2 times uh, tangent theta 1 plus sine theta 2. Okay, so the uh, when I throw in the numbers, so let's do that. So 588 uh, minus cosine theta 2, which is 50 degrees, tangent of theta 1, which is 110, plus sine of theta 2, which is 50 degrees. Okay, and I throw that into my calculator and it spits out 232 newtons. Okay, and then you can take that and throw it into here and then you can solve for T1 and then uh, get an answer of 436 newtons. Okay, so I skipped over a bit of the algebra, but really what I want you to get here is this, this is the really important part. Taking the free body diagram, x and y components, and then uh, it's just a matter of uh, grinding out the simultaneous equation, plugging in the numbers, and, uh, and getting your answer. Okay? So you can, uh, one thing you can do is you can check this by taking these numbers here, throwing them up into uh, these equations, and seeing if they work, and, and they should. Okay? All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.